So today I am going to give you eight ways you can get into property even if you've got no money pot at all. Sounds good, doesn't it? Good. Let's get into it, shall we? But first, let me introduce myself. If you're my regular, then fabulous. Put the kettle on, take loads of notes. You know how this thing works. But if this is the first video you've ever uh, met me in, then my name is Susanna, Susanna Cole, and I run The Good Property Company. We were a deal sourcing business. We did over 200 deals, 45 million pounds worth of property. We flipped a ton of deals. At one point, I had 30 on the go at the same time. Most of those deals were done with joint ventures. I have raised, borrowed, and paid back millions of pounds paid back, you notice that, and I've ended up with a large property portfolio which allows me to be financially free. So by that I mean time and money freedom. So I live part of the time here in Bristol, but also I live, which is why I've got quite a little freckle going on, I live part of the time in Barcelona, bought myself an apartment oh, coming on three years ago uh, for my birthday, uh, a, 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 and I live nine minutes from the beach, so I live kind of half and half, and, and I bought it with cash, never going to have a mortgage on it, and all of that is a result of property. So basically, my basic message is, you can do it. If I, at five foot two, can do it, you definitely can do it. And that is why I set up the YouTube channel all these years ago. So you can see like, you can see, you can see from the beginning, you know, running, running from deal to deal, running to the gym, like shaky camera work. So you can see a history of the business. You can see that if from starting from small beginnings, I can do, you can do it. And that is also, and I do want you to subscribe and like, by the way, because it's really good for you. And I've, I've planned a year's worth of videos for you. So I'm quite excited about that. But it's also why I've put on the Good Property Company very, very high quality, informative, motivating, uh, supportive and deeply knowledge based education for you. Everything downloadable straight away, everything startable straight away is the education I wish I had when I started in property. Because I thought if I know how to do this, why not turn it into really good quality education for you guys? so that you can get started at a much reduced cost than if you were doing something live with somebody and you can go at your pace. So have a good look at the goodpropertycompany.co.uk as well. And hopefully we become one of my regulars and we're gonna be talking deals. Now I speak to a lot of people in property and the biggest reason they tell me that they can't get started in property is they don't have enough money. They don't have any money, they don't have enough money. Whether it's that I was, I mean, I flew in two days ago from Barcelona, so whether it's the waiter in a Lebanese restaurant in Gracia, the guy was like 18, 19, and he was like, what do you do, and property, and da, da, da. And I was like, you can do it. It's like, now I've got no money. I'm like, no, no, you can. Or uh, a, a chap I work with, Paul, who who's, you know, just hugely successful, but not yet kind of got into the mentality that I don't need all the money in order to be able to make this thing happen. So every time we work together as part of our agenda, I'm like, you need to buy property. And he's like, okay, I will. So it's the kind of um, mental reason people give themselves to not be able to get started in property. And I can, uh, I'll tell you truthfully, it really frustrates me. Not for me, but for them. Because I know that if they can get over that hurdle of, uh, I, 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 there are other ways to get into property without having any money. They can get started and they, they can get closer to their goal of financial freedom, living life on their terms, running their life out of the nine to five. So let's get rid of that mental block you've got. And let's just, um, I'm going to cover eight ways, but let's just have you go, yep, I know if she's telling me there are ways I can make this happen without a pot to start with. Okay, I'm in. Let me follow through the process and decide what I want to do. But before you do, before we go into that and clear away that kind of mental blockage, you've also got to decide what you're in property for. Are you in property for a pension? Are you in property for long term wealth? Are you in property for short term, really high cash flow? Because that will determine which strategy you take. If you want shorter term, really high cash flow, flipping. If you want longer term wealth, you're probably going to be buying a major property portfolio and paying it down. So property is a broad umbrella. You have to decide your strategy within it, but I have solutions for every single one of your de strategic decisions. Are you ready? So the first strategy, and this strategy will bring you in really serious amounts of cash, is joint venture flipping. Really simple. I like to keep things very simple. Every single one of my investors had the same deal. So they could never kind of meet in a bar some way and whisper and realize that they all had different deals. And here was the way I did it. 
you, let's just say you're the one with the money. Uh, I found the deal. You bought the property in your name. I put a restriction, an RX1, against it, which was released later on with an RX4. We signed a legal agreement, and I'll tell you about them just shortly. I then found the builder. Um, I then spec'd out the, the build. You paid for the renovation cost. And then when the property is finished, it got sold, and we split the property 50 50. The profit, sorry, 50 50. So straight away, you can get into property with none of your own money using investors, and you split profit 50 50 on a flip. And given that you're doing a 20% markup on flips, if you're selling a property at 500 grand, you'll be banking about 100 grand profit before a tax and before splitting it. So it's 50 grand each before tax. So quite, you do a couple of JVs at that level, you're earning 100 grand without putting a penny in. Is that interesting to you? Very nice, isn't it? And remember I said about the contracts? Well, my contracts cost me over two grand for my lawyers. Guess what? I've got them ready for you to download on my website, which is quite helpful, isn't it? Also, as a deal packager, I've got those contracts ready for you to download on my website as well. So go to thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk and download the JV paperwork pack uh, or the deal package uh, contract pack. Now, there's a couple of things you need to be just mindful of. I've obviously I've done lots more videos on joint venturing, but I want you to document the process. Use Drive or Dropbox. We used to use Dropbox, have a shared folder with the investor. Every time you went to site, you would upload photographs so the investor didn't even need to go on site. They didn't even need to travel anywhere. They could see the progress of their property. Every time you had invoices, you upload them to the Dropbox again, and you just send the investor a quick WhatsApp, hey, I've just uploaded. So again, the investor's feeling quite informed, but for you, it's a very easy, simple way to do it. And I used to put in half an hour call per week with an investor when I was joint venturing. And the other thing is just be mindful, I won't go into it here, of PS 13.3. I do have other videos on it. So how long will it take? Well, typically um, from moment of the money going in to money going out, I was, I was roughly doing about five and three quarter months to six months. Now, if you have a buyer pulling out or you encounter any problems on the build, you probably add a couple of months to that. So you want to say between six and nine months between the cash going in and you banking the cash coming out. How much can you earn? Let me give you some great straightforward examples of some of my students. Joe and Josh involved in a JV, 34 grand profit. They took home 17. Nice, simple, tidy, relatively small, relatively small risk. Chris. She added planning gain and flipped it out into auctions. So they didn't even need to manage builders. 200 grand profit, split 50-50. She took home 100, so did her investor. Simon, he did a joint venture, all funded by the JV partner. 134 grand profit. What's 134 grand divided by two? 67 grand. So at that point, he jumped out of his day job. Interested? That is only tip one. Hold on, keep making notes. We're on to number two. Number two is, as I explained how I got started, deal sourcing or deal packaging. You find the deal, you find the investor, you match them together, the investor buys the property, you get paid a fee. It's almost like a reverse estate agent. I want you to charge 5%. So how much will it cost? Well, you need to be com compliant. Uh, and so those, the compliance are four areas and I cover this in other videos, but it's gonna cost you around about a thousand pound for compliance, member of an ombudsman, a, a, a redress scheme, sorry, insurance, money laundering, and information commissioner office are the four main areas, okay? Because you're managing people's data. Um, and then how much can you earn from it? So how much can you earn? Gatton Road, bought for 220, flipped out for 312. That was the investor's work, not mine. I got paid 5%, which is, 11 grand. Hedwick Street, 180, flipped out. Again, it made a lot of money for the investor. I got paid 5%, which is nine grand. And then a block of flats where we bought four flats together and put them individually to investors. And that was Church Road, that was. Yeah, bought 270, end value 402. I got paid 13 and a half thousand quid. So three deals alone, 33 and a half thousand pound, which is more than UK average salary. And we were doing roughly a deal a week. So you can see that deal packaging is highly, highly paid. How fast do you get paid? Well, the fastest I ever got paid as a deal packager was four days, very unusual. Usually it's basically the time between 
agreeing the property was when the clock starts ticking and then the investor doing the exchange on the property. So usually eight to 10 to 12 weeks. And of course you're conveyancing like mad to move that forward as fast as possible. So so far you're seeing the theme, aren't you? That finding discounted deals, you being, you being on the skill side of it, is a real great entry route to property when you're getting started without a pot, with that much money. Either as a joint venture where you found the deal or as a deal packager. So you need those skills. And if you have a look on my website, I've got a whole section on deal sourcing and it's thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk. Have a good look over. Right, your third tip on getting started without a pot is bridging. Don't let it put you off, oh my word. You know, everybody's heart sinks when they don't know anything about bridging. There are so many bridging loans out there and they're, they're all kind of, I don't mean they're fluid and flexible, but you know, there'll be bridging loans to do this and bridging loans to do that and bridging loans to do the other. So some are, uh, are just taking on old recs, some are like buying faster auction and some give you the flexibility to actually pay for the property at the value it is worth when it's done up. Are you listening to me? So let's just say, just super simple, you buy it for 75, but done up it's worth 100. You can, from some, not many, find a bridging project product sorry through your broker because you, you probably won't have this knowledge yourself you you find a commercial broker who's really good at bridging and will allow you to get a bridging loan on the end value of the property which because you're buying it discounted means you'll probably get enough money to buy the entire property mad isn't it but they do exist they may a uh, need you to be experienced so i'm not promising you're going to always find this but you should find bridging loans to be able to do this very interesting indeed. And you might be able to roll up the interest until the payment at the end. And, and how do you pay the bridging off? You either flip the property out or you uh, rent it out and then you just take a normal buy to let mortgage on it. So obviously what's critical here that you bought it discounted in the first place so your exit route is secure. But you didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know that for years until my broker suggested it. And I was like, what? You can do that? Oh, yes, please. Downside is they're often quite expensive. So you've got to factor in, is there enough juice in this deal to be able to pay all this interest and all these fees and still come out the right way up? But if you're good at finding deals, see the theme here, you're, you, the discount will be able to pay for the bridging finance. Route number four, I'm not just giving you one route, am I? Is working with private investors. Again, you have to be really good at finding the discounted deals because Otherwise, if you're buying something that's actually at the value already and you're having to pay the private investor uh, interest cost, that just doesn't work. You have to find a property that's worth this much and you're buying it discounted for this much. Um, by the way, guys, for me, that's as normal as finding a uh, drinking a cup of tea. Like right now, my son is uh, going through the process of buying an apartment in Barcelona, literally around the corner from where I live, so right beside the sea and he's buying it for 140,000 euros and done up, it'll be worth 250. Mama ain't lost her touch. So, private investors, how do you do this? Well, you uh, follow the processes, and I'm not gonna go into great detail because I've done lots of other videos, and there's a whole playlist on the YouTube channel about finding private investors and working with private investors, but basically five to nine touch points, a proper legal documentation. Again, go to my website. The paperwork is all there for you. It cost me two grand. Plus, I give you my marketing brochures. You can copy them all. I'm really happy with that. Run them past a lawyer, but I'm trying to save you two grand here, folks. Uh, and you get your paperwork read to together. You get to know your investors. And then you can kind of put together the agreement as, as you both wish. So let me give you some simple structures that I've done. Uh, borrowing 75% of the property value because I had a bit of money. Great. Borrowing 100% of the property value. I did that a lot and refinanced and paid that person back out. Borrowing 100% of the property value and 100% of the refurb value. I did that a lot as well. One would be the uh, property value and a different investor at a different interest rate um, would be the refurb value. And of course, it's basically like having a private mortgage. They have a first charge on the property. These guys would have a second charge, a flow cutting charge, an equitable charge, or a restriction, depending on how much the refurb was. Uh, and But the first guys would have, basically they could repossess the house if I screwed it up, which I didn't because I did 45 pieces of research on each one. 
Do you see why you need to take notes with me? So I, it was a really simple thing to structure. I would pay them interest. I would always have a break clause in the loan so that I would be like, oh, 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 let's go super fast. Let's get it refinanced. Let's pay them back out. And I would normally either flip the property, but usually when I was borrowing 100% of the money from investors, it was because I wanted to add them to my property portfolio. So they had to be discounted so that I could refinance them and the remortgage paid off the private investor. Occasionally, it didn't fully pay off the private investor and the interest, if you like, for the first year, so I was kind of babysitting it for a deal for the first year, would pay the investor's additional interest cost. But not bad. I don't mind babysitting a property for anything up to one year in order to earn serious money for the rest of my life. There are loads of people out there who've got a lot of money, who are getting nothing in the bank, um, who will be glad of the security of property first charge and willing to work with you if you're competent, professional, trustworthy, and you do what you say. And be aware, of course, there is legislation that you need to comply with, which is all right and proper. So how long will it take? Well, for, for me, finding a deal takes a couple of days at most because I'm really experienced in how to do this. Finding investors, again, it can take six to eight to 10 weeks because you wanna do five to nine touch points. But what you wanna do the whole way through your career is continue to grow and develop investor relationships. So when you found the deal, you're not going, where are you? You've, you've kind of worked at finding the deal and worked at finding investors at the same time. And then buying the property and renovating it is usually six to eight to 10 to 12 weeks. Obviously straight away, get your tenants in. And then at that point, when you've got tenants in on an AST, you then refinance, remortgage, and that can take another three months. So you probably got the loan for normally about eight or nine months, uh, and then you're going to pay the investor back out again. Not bad. If considering you just bought a house with none of your own money and the investor's only in for kind of eight months, you're paying them interest, then you're on, now on to normal buy-to-let mortgage. So how much can you earn? Typically, I earn about £1,000 per HMO, uh, student-led or, or professional HMO. Service accommodation, you can earn even more and probably single-let, you earn less. But I don't like you to earn less than £1,000 per property. Um, so if you multiply that out and say, OK, I'm going to pay interest for like eight months and then for the rest of my life, I'm going to earn twelve grand a year from this property that I didn't need to put a penny into, it's probably worth doing. Let me give you the case study of an example, which wasn't a perfect example. I prefer to, I don't want to tell you my best examples. I want to tell you the real ones that still had a bit of a head scratch. I was buying a property at Castle Road, buying it for 50, 150 grand, sorry. It was knackered and it was worth at the time 230. So I knew that in advance. There was 80 grand in it, but I spent 40 grand doing it up because it was really knackered. So my total spend on the property was 150 purchase plus 40 grand renovation, 190,000. And I knew it was worth 230,000 and I got a 75% mortgage, which is unfortunately not 190, but 172,500. Yikes, not the full money borrowed. Because I bought the full amount, I borrowed the full amount of the property plus a little bit more from my first investor, Anthony, who now is a very dear friend of mine, but at the time was an investor. And then I bought, I borrowed the rest of the refurb money from somebody else. So what am I going to do? You know, it was 190 grand total spend, but I only got 172 and a half thousand pound back. Well, here is where buying profitable projects really works out for you. The missing balance was 17 and a half thousand plus the interest. And that is 190, the purchase price of 150, plus the refurb of 40, minus the refinance mortgage that I got back out after six months, 172,500. So I was missing, if you like, 17,500 plus the interest I needed to pay those investors. So this is where making sure that you're buying highly profitable properties come in. I don't want you buying properties with investors' money at 200 pounds a month profit. If anything doesn't quite square up or you still know it's a really good deal, but you know there's some payback periods for the future still to come out, you'll be like babysitting that property for 10 years before you, you start earning money from it. And that's just madness. So I was making over a thousand pound a month. I had 17 and a half, didn't I? Missing, if you like, which is like a year and a half plus the interest. So it's about two years I actually 
babysat that property where although I was managing it, running the tenants, I didn't actually earn any, earn any money off it, but I was using that money to pay back my investors who were completely happy by the way. Um, so sometimes you're gonna refinance it and pay the majority of the money back to the investor and then by agreement, you're gonna use the profit from the property to pay back the final bits to the investor. Or alternatively, you're gonna bring in a smaller investor just to cover that little bit of missing um, and you'll pay it all back to your first investor and swap out a second investor. Now, I know that sounds complicated, but actually it's quite smooth, isn't it? And that second investor, um, do you think they're gonna be quite comfortable? Like there's a totally dark property, there's a revaluation statement from the survey, there's an AST, there's evidence the tenants are paying. It's a pretty clear and done deal, isn't it? So uh, there's an imperfect example, but it shows you what to do when the balances don't quite match up and you're still making good money. By the way, that property is now doubled in value and I still make over a thousand pound a month every single month from it. So well worth having done, even though I had to babysit it for two years before I personally got paid out. Well, good if you are. Right, tip number five is either director's loan or business loan. And this is something I did regularly. I ran a flipping strategy and a deal packaging strategy, which were both very cash generative. And then I used to take that money and loan it to myself to buy property. Obviously, within a certain period of time, there are rules around this that you need to talk to your accountant. You have to put that money back or you'll end up having to pay tax on it as if you've taken it out as payment to yourself, like an earnings, like a wage almost. Uh, but I regularly had a cash generating strategy which lent me the money to build a property portfolio, which I then paid back. And then I was sat there with a nice property portfolio. So it's basically I was like my own investor, cash generating, you know, multiple streams of income, uh, lend it to myself, uh, refinance it, pay it back. Uh, and then the money is there ready to lend to myself as well. So if you are doing property, I definitely suggest you run a cash generating strategy, whether it's deal packaging or flipping along investing. Your sixth route is to borrow from a pension pot. Uh, this is something I haven't actually done myself yet. So I just want to tell you, I've got knowledge about it. I've been doing a lot of reading up about it at the moment because I'm going to be borrowing um, to buy commercial property from my own pension pot, which is fairly sizable. But there are loads of people out there with really great pension pots and you can do a SAS a, and then they can lend it out and a, to you uh, it, so you either borrow from your own pension pot or you can borrow from other people's pension pots. And I personally am going to be borrowing from my own pension pot and then I can match it with a 50% mortgage. Nice, isn't it? So my deposit is 50% from my pension pot and uh, I can get a 50% mortgage uh, and then that can change along. Now, the, the profit from my pension pot has to go back into my pension pot, but I don't mind because <laughs> it's all going to benefit me anyway. And of course, if you're borrowing from somebody else's pension pot, then you're going to be paying them interest and because they're basically investing their, they're, they're self-directing, they're self-investing their pension pot. Now, I'm not an expert on this in any shape or form, but my lovely friend, Chris Jones, she runs the Marlowe SAS Meet, S-A-S-S -S -S Property Meet. So you might want to look that up and attend. Uh, they get great speakers and Chris is a brilliant woman to talk to in property. So good luck to you if that's an option for you. If you're like, oh yeah, I do have a good pension pot. I could lend it to myself. Yeah, you could. And the other thing I quite like about that idea of pension pot, because I'm looking at it with commercial, with commercial as opposed to residential, you tend to rent that out on a full repairing and insuring lease, meaning they have to hand it back to you in the exact same condition 15 years later. Rent's paid in advance quarterly, or maybe you might want to negotiate annually. So it's a very hands-off investment strategy. So it's a really great financial freedom strategy as well as actually it, it, it making your own pension pot even more profitable for you later on or borrowing it from somebody else. My seventh tip is one called assisted sales. Again, I'm just gonna cover it briefly. It's not something I've done myself, but one of my fabulous mentees, Suni Kapoor, has done it with his wife and did it so successfully and in such a beautiful win-win position for the person. So basically what it is, is if the person's having trouble selling a property, it, there could be all sorts of reasons. There might be legal things that need solving. There might be kind of 
um, construction things that need solving, or they might just be doing a terrible job marketing it. And you come in and you think, do you know what? I could make a much better job of this. I could achieve a much greater price for you than you're currently not achieving for yourself. And we're going to agree that above a certain percentage, we're going to split the uplift 50-50. So they still get the value for the property, but you get the and it depends on the agreement you have for them, but you get all of the extra value you've brought uh, and, uh, and sometimes they'll take a percentage of that as well. So that's a win from them. It's a win from you because you're doing property with none of your own cash apart from you definitely need a legal agreement. And I don't have a copy of that on my website, but go to go to good lawyers for that one. So that's called assisted sales where they the vendor is effectively sharing the profit with you because your ability to make their profit sale, go, the property sale go through is going to be effective and you may well be able to solve problems and get a higher price for them. So they're winning, you're winning. And the final one I've done, and the only re uh, so the final one I'm going to talk to you about is crowdfunding. And again, I personally haven't done this because I just had such a run of investors. I had such, not a queue, but I had such great relationships with almost all my investors and I liked working with them that I didn't see the need to go to a crowdfunding platform. And because I've been doing property for a long time, crowdfunding platforms emerged after I'd already created all my relationships with my investors. So there you'll go to a crowdfunding platform. You'll put your case forward. It will be scrutinized, which is perfectly fine. Uh, and you'll need to research uh, the rules, if you like, around each platform. And then uh, your 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 property proposition is is potentially funded by a whole crowd of people saying, I'll put eight grand in, 10 grand in, whatever. Clearly, there's rules and regulations and it's a little bit expensive, but it definitely helps you get off the ground. If you haven't got any experience of working with investors or haven't put any time into working with investors. So it's a really good option for you as well. So shall we recap? There are eight ways you can get into property without having a pot of your own, which is a really nice thing to know. If you're sat there going, I so want to do this. I so want to change my life. I so want to have my life run on my terms, the way I see fit, but money's stopping me. So let me list them out for you. One, joint ventures. I did tons of them. Two, deal packaging or deal sourcing. We did over 200 deals. Number three, bridging with the right product that funds the whole thing. You have to have a bit of a look around for that or your broker will. Number four, private loans structured any which way is applicable, always obviously with legal agreements. Number five, director's loan from a profitable business that you are running yourself. Number six is borrowing from a pension pot. Number seven, assisted sales and number eight, crowdfunding. So you are no excuse to not get into property now, have you? There are always ways forward. There are always solutions to anything we feel is stopping us. So where would I guide you to start if you were with the goal of you owning assets, becoming financially free? Well, one of the big things you have to avoid is that whole shiny penny syndrome. Oh, it's so exciting. I'll do a bit of this, a bit of that, bit, and you never get good at anything. You get super excited. You move on to the next thing before you've got depth, and then none of them really work. So I want you not to go, thanks Suze for all eight, I'm just gonna incorporate all eight. I want you to pick two. And the two that I would pick for you are deal sourcing and joint ventures. Let me explain why. Deal sourcing, very low entry cost, eh, and you are exercising the skills you need most. Finding discounted deals and finding JV, eh, finding investors, sorry, de eh, investors to buy the deals, putting them together. So. In terms of skill development, really important to you because you will not succeed if you can't find discounted deals in property. Um, secondly, very fast to be paid. So usually you get, you find it and six, eight, 10, 12 weeks, I don't like, but six, eight, 10, maybe 12 weeks later, you get paid and it's really good money. 5% of purchase price. So if you find a deal at half a million, that's maybe worth 700,000, you're gonna bank 25 grand. Deal sourcing, my number one pick for you. And then the second one is joint ventures. They fund it, they own it, they fund the refurb, you do all the work. You split the profit 50-50. So upside is much higher profit. So for example, if you're flipping out a property at half a million, it should be about 100 grand profit, so 20% markup. Well, you'll be taking home 50 grand, not 25. 
Downside is it's slower. It's usually about six months from purchase to, to sale. But nonetheless, to have, you know, run a whole load of them coming in, 25 grand dropping in your bank account, start it off six months later, once a month, 25 grand dropping in, that'll buy you a whole load of houses, won't it? And once you've got good at those two strategies, deal sourcing and joint venturing, just rinse and repeat. Do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Now you're making cash, making cash, making cash, making cash. And do you know what I want you to do with that cash? Still whap it into a house that's high yielding, making you over a thousand pound a month. Woo -hoo -hoo! And then do it again. And then, so you are running this cash generating strategy or the two deal sourcing and joint venture flipping, boom, into a house. Deal sourcing, joint venture flipping, boom, into a house. And so you are beautifully building up your assets to the point you go, I don't need to do anything else. I can live like this for the rest of my life, financially free, living life on my terms. Doesn't take long. Time frame, probably three to five years max. To, I mean, I'd love to tell you, you'll get financially free in six months. It's just not true. It's, it's, I cannot model it out mathematically to see that that's going to happen. So you, you're better off spit sticking with me, who's going to tell you the truth so that you know what to expect. But three to five years isn't bad, is it? Anyway, Good luck to you. If I could do it, you could do it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you see all the videos first.